In this Circuits of the Past video, you'll see Herman's top 10 of lost Formula 1 circuits. The Nivelle circuit opened in 1971 as a safer alternative to spa francorchamps Nivelle hosted the Formula 1 Belgian Grand Prix twice, in 1972 and 74. Both races were won by Emerson Fittipaldi. But because the circuit was only 2.3 miles long, with huge runoff areas, it wasn't very popular with the drivers. However, there was a very challenging section called the Big Loop. Actually, the track was never really finished. The design foresaw a longer track, but the owners could not bring up enough money to actually buy the land necessary to build it. They decided to build a short version first and then expand it later. That was a huge miscalculation. Once the circuit was there, the landowners wanted more money, so Nivelle was never completed. The circuit came into financial trouble and we closed its doors in 1981, but that wasn't the end of its story. After the closure, it was used for illegal racing. In spring of 1998, Herman visited the abandoned Nivelle circuit for the first time. He was just in time before the demolition started. The fate of Nivelle inspired him in 2003 to start a website about lost circuits. The name? <laughs> circuits of the past. Today, the old Nivelle circuit is a business park. The public road follows parts of the old circuit layout, like the big loop. And in the woods, there's still part of an old abandoned track. But it's only a matter of time until that part is also converted into a business park too. The Avis in Berlin is without doubt one of the most curious racetracks of the past. In fact, it was an experimental, multiple lane highway which could also be used as a racetrack. The Avis opened in 1921 and was one of the fastest circuits in the world. It had two very long straights connected with an artificial loop on both sides. The original Avis was 12.16 miles long. A reconstruction came in 1936, when a new road was planned to the exposition site next to the Avis. The Nord Curve, German for North Corner, should make place for this new road, but a compensation, a new high banked Nord Curve, would be built as well. Actually, a similar corner was planned to replace the South Loop. The works were already in place when World War II broke out, so today you can still see the remains of the unfinished South Corner. In 1954, there was a Formula 1 race at the Avis which didn't count towards the championship. However, for political reasons in 1959, two years before the Berlin Wall was built, the German Grand Prix was held at the Avis to give people from the Russian occupation zone the opportunity to visit the Grand Prix. The 1959 German Grand Prix was also the only Formula 1 race ever to have been driven over two heats. For safety reasons, the high-banked North Corner, nicknamed the Wall of Death, was demolished and replaced by a flat corner. Through the years, the layout was shortened and chicanes were built, but the Avis was still a dangerous track. In the 90s, the Avis was used for the Formula 3 and touring car races. During a touring car race in 1995, British driver Keith de Orr died after a crash on the North Corner. The Avis received increasing criticism over time. When a new racetrack was built not far from Berlin, the Avis closed in the 1998 season. In 1999, there was one final right to say goodbye to one of the most peculiar circuits of the past. The Ranskrio circuit was operational from between the years of 1926 and 1972. It was most famous for holding the French Grand Prix, which it held 12 times between the years of 1950 and 1966. But alongside Formula 1 races, it also hosted the annual 12 Hours of Rands. Originally, the Rands Griot circuit ran through the village of Guillot. In 1952, however, a new connection was built to shortcut the passage through Griot. A year later, this section was extended, which made the Rands Griot circuit one of the fastest circuits on the Formula 1 calendar. After the 1953 Grand Prix, they also increased the radius of the Mouison corner and the Filloir corner to make the circuit even faster. After the last French Grand Prix in 1966, the Rans Griot circuit was used just for national races and the 12 hours of Guillot. But the track soon became outdated and it was closed in June 1972. The day after the last race, they started to demolish the pits. 
However, shortly after the start of the demolition, a new mayor ordered it to be stopped immediately, but sadly, the first pit boxes had already been demolished. After many years of being abandoned, new plans were made to demolish the rest of the buildings and build new houses on the site instead. Fortunately, the foundation Les Amis de Circuit de Griot was founded to save the remains of the old Rans Griot circuit. They got permission to restore the buildings and guarantee that nothing else would be demolished again. Every time Herman visits the Rans Griot circuit, he can see the improvement in the restoration. The foundation does a good job in preserving this piece of motorsport history. The Rouen Les Arts circuit was a street circuit with a permanent pit building and grandstands in the northern France region of Normandy. The shape and the layout of the circuit was actually quite similar to that of Spa Francorchamps. The original version of the circuit was 3.169 miles long and started with a breathtaking descent. The official name of this section was Six Ferreras, but some drivers gave it the nickname Chicken's Lift. The brave drivers would take the whole section flat out while the chickens would lift the throttle. During the years, the layout would change, first because of construction of a new highway, later because of safety reasons. In 1973, the six Ferreras became an improvised chicane. A year later, it was a permanent chicane to lower the speed for chickens lift. In the last version of improvements, a permanent section was then also placed. The Rouen circuit hosted the French Grand Prix in 1952, 57, 62, 64 and 1968. After it lost the French Grand Prix, circuit Rouen Les Arts was used for Formula 2 races up until 1978. After 1978, the major event to go there was the annual round for the French Formula 3 championship. At the end of the 1993 season, however, the street circuit was found to be too dangerous for all series and so was no longer used. Since then, the buildings have been demolished, but some versions of the track are still drivable. Most of the permanent section, though, is long gone. The Montjuic Street Circuit was located in Montjuic Park in Barcelona. With its mix of challenging corners, elevations, architecture and natural beauty, it was one of the best street circuits ever made. The 2.36 mile long circuit hosted the Formula 1 Spanish Grand Prix four times, between 1969 and 1975. The other years, the Grand Prix alternated between itself and Harama. But during the 1975 Grand Prix, German driver Ralf Stommelen crashed heavily after his rear wing of his car broke. Stommelen survived the crash, but three marshals and a reporter were killed. That crash meant the end of Formula 1 racing at Montjuic Park. Until 1986 it was still in use though for motorcycle racing, but in the end it was found too dangerous for racing at all. So after the 1986 motorcycle racing was completed, the street circuit was never used for racing again. Today, the street circuit is still there, but as a public road instead. So if you want, you can enjoy a lap at low speed and enjoy all the beautiful scenery around you. Talking about the old Monza circuit, we actually mean the combination of the current road circuit and an old high banked oval. When the Monza circuit opened in 1922, it contained a road circuit and a high banked oval which could be used together or separately. The length of the combined circuit was exactly 10 kilometers, which is 6.2 miles. During a huge reconstruction of the track, the original banking was demolished. However, in the 1950s, Monza wanted to return to its original concept of a combination of a road circuit and a high banked oval once again. In 1955 the new Monza layout opened with its new oval, on almost exactly the same site as the original. To give the circuit its exact length of 10 kilometers once again, they introduced the famous Parabolica corner. The full circuit was used three times for the Formula 1 Italian Grand Prix, in 1956, 1960 and 1961. The full version with the banking was also used for the 1966 Formula 1 movie Grand Prix. 
After Formula One abandoned the banking, it was also found too dangerous for other series. It was used for the last time in 1969 during the thousand kilometres of Monza. Since then, the old oval was left abandoned. When the Monza circuit needed to improve safety in the 90s, they needed to chop down some trees, so they came up with a plan to demolish the disused banking and then use the space to replant trees again, just like they would do with the old 2002 Hockenheim revamp. But after the massive protest, among others by Formula One drivers themselves, they decided to cancel the plan. Since 1978 though, the old Monza Oval is used once a year by the Monza Rally, but only the lower part of the banking can be used. The rest of the year it's just simply a memory to the past which can be explored utterly legally. Ragazzi, qui sto rischiando di brutto. Che se volo giù in bici di qua sto facendo mezza pedalata perché sono col pedale di sinistra tocco nel cemento. Ho detto the first time the old Spa-Francorchamps circuit was in use was in 1922. The 8.7 mile long circuit through the Belgian Ardennes was very fast, and that's exactly what the circuit bosses intended. In 1939, the section with l'ancienne Duane hairpin was cut off by a new artificial corner to make the circuit even faster. Because the new corner was very steep, they called it Le Radion. Today, most people incorrectly call this a rouge. Insert your meme here. In 1947, an artificial corner was introduced to replace the slow Stavolo corner. The new Stavolo corner was much faster, included banking. But the one most feared corner at Old Spa Francorchamps was the Master Kink an almost flat-out combination of two kinks at the end of the long master straight. The old Spa-Francorchamps circuit hosted the Formula 1 Belgian Grand Prix 18 times between the period of 1950 to 1970. But as people started to think more about safety, the fast street circuit became increasingly criticised. After the 1970 Grand Prix, Formula 1 shunned the old Spa-Francorchamps circuit and moved to Nivelle and Zolder. In 1979, however, the new Spa-Francorchamps circuit opened. It contained a part of the old circuit, but with a new section too. Unlike many other reconstructed circuits though, the new layout was still fast and challenging. Today, you can drive most of the old track yourself, because it's a public road. However, in 2000, the current track became a permanent race circuit so the more common parts, where the old and new combine, is no longer open to traffic. The old Osterreich ring was one of the finest permanent circuits of its time. With its fast corners and huge elevation changes, it was often compared with Spa-Francorchamps. It opened in 1969 and was an alternative for a bumpy circuit on an airfield near Zeltvig, Austria. The Osterreich ring is located near the village of Spielberg, not too far from Zeltvig itself. The 3.7 mile circuit hosted the Austrian Grand Prix from 1970 to 1987. As usual, beautiful circuits were also dangerous. When in 1975 Mark Donoghue died, the fast first corner was changed for the 1976 Grand Prix. A year later, it was changed into a chicane. However, after the 1987 Austrian Grand Prix, the Osterreich ring was removed from the F1 calendar. In 1996, a new version of the track opened, under the name A1 Ring, but the natural flow of the circuit was destroyed with this new layout. It was a stop-and-go track now. Today we know the circuit as the Red Bull Ring, after it was bought by Red Bull owner Dietrich Mateschitz. However, a part of the old Osterreich Ring is still there. There's even plans to reconnect this part, but it will be a tough battle to get permission to reuse the old Western Loop because of the noise complaints from local residents. So for now, this section is left abandoned. The Clement Ferrand circuit was a street circuit around an extinct volcano in the Puy de Dome region of France. The five mile long circuit opened in 1958 and contained a challenging mix of different corners and elevations. For that reason, it was nicknamed the French Nürburgring. 
The old Clermont Ferrand circuit hosted the Formula One French Grand Prix in 1965, 1969, 1970 and 1972. Because the old Clermont Ferrand circuit was found too dangerous, it lost the French Grand Prix and other international races. Until 1988 it was used just for national races, then the street circuit closed for motorsport. However, the General Council of Prix de Dôme recognised the interest of a circuit to the local economy. With their financial support, a new 2.47 mile circuit was built. Just like spa Francorchamps, they used part of the old circuit and built a new connection. The new circuit opened in 1989 and it was now a permanent racetrack, known under the name Circuit de Chirard. Most of the old circuit is still there as a public road, and there is a small abandoned section between the public road and the current Chirard circuit. The Hockenheim circuit opened in 1932 as a triangular street circuit. Despite to what many sources claim, Hockenheim was absolutely not built as a test track for Mercedes. It was actually an initiative of assistant timekeeper and local motorsport fan Ernst Christ. The first version of the track was a fast triangle. In 1938 the famous Ostkurf, German for East Corner, was built as part of the new permanent section. In the 1960s though, a new highway was planned and it would cut through the section of the village of Hockenheim and remove it from the track. So to keep the track operational, a reconstruction was necessary. In 1966, a new stadium section, named Motodrome, replaced the run through Hockenheim. Now called the Hockenheim Ring, it was a full permanent racetrack. They also changed the driving direction from anti-clockwise to clockwise. It was a sad day, however, on April the 7th, 1968, when two-time Formula One world champion Jim Clark lost his life during a Formula Two race there at Hockenheim. After this tragedy, chicanes were built into the fast sections through the woods. One of those chicanes would end up being close to the site of the accident, and in 1994, it was named after Jim Clark. Because of safety issues of the old Nürburgring, the Formula One German Grand Prix moved to Hockenheim for the first time in 1970. After a short return to the Nürburgring, the German Grand Prix came back in 1977 to stay at Hockenheim and settle there for a long time. With the popularity of Michael Schumacher and the opening of the Lausitz Ring, circuit bosses feared the loss of the Grand Prix, so a plan was made to modernise the track. Nope. It wasn't Ecclestone, or the FIA who required the reconstruction of Hockenheim, the initiative came from the owners themselves. A new circuit, designed by Hermann Tilke, was then built. To compensate for the fallen trees, the old track was demolished to plant new ones, and the track opened again in 2002. But the reconstruction was a financial disaster, which brought Hockenheim to the brink of bankruptcy. Thanks to government intervention, the track could be saved from downfall, but with the taxpayers' money, of course. Today, many fans still miss the old circuit, with its typical blast through the old woods. The reconstruction was not only a financial disaster, but also one of the most controversial reconstructions of a racetrack in history. If you want more information about circuits in this video, please visit the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There's also a free ebook about seven abandoned circuits that you can visit legally. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more memories of circuits of the past.